Pulitzer Prize for the awarding of the Bill Pulitzer Prize at the Academy of Sciences in Vienna. I had to buy a suit, as I had suddenly realized two hours before the presentation that I couldn't appear at this doubtless extraordinary ceremony in trousers and a pullover. And so I'd actually made the decision on the so-called Graben to go to the Kornmarkt and outfit myself with appropriate formality. To which end, based on previous shopping for socks on several occasions, I picked the best-known gentleman's outfitters with the descriptive name Sir Anthony. If I remember correctly, it was 9.45 when I went into St. Anthony's Salon. The award ceremony for the Globe Art Surprise was at 11, so I had plenty of time. I intended to buy myself the best pure wool suit in anthracite, even if it was off the peg with matching socks, a tie, and an arrow shirt in fine cloth, striped grey and blue. The difficulty of initially making oneself understood in the so-called finer emporiums is well known. Even if the customer immediately says what he's looking for in the most concise terms, at first he'll be stared at incredulously until he repeats what he wants. But naturally, the salesman he's talking to hasn't taken it in yet. So it took longer than it need have that time in Sir Anthony to be led to the relevant racks. In fact, the arrangement of this shop was already familiar to me from buying socks there. And I myself knew better than the salesman where to find the suit I was looking for. I walked over to the rack with the suits in question and pointed to one particular example, which the salesman took down from the rod to hold up for my inspection. I checked the quality of the material and even tried it on in the dressing room. I bent forward several times and leaned back and found that the trousers fit. I put on the jacket, turned around several times in front of the mirror, raised my arms and lowered them again. The jacket fit like the trousers. I walked around the shop in the suit a little bit and took the opportunity to find the shirt and the socks. Finally, I said I would keep the suit on and I also wanted to put on the shirt and the socks. I found a tie, put it on, tightened it as much as I could, inspected myself once more in the mirror, paid, and went out. They had packed my old trousers and pullover in a bag with Sir Anthony on it. So with this bag in my hand, I crossed the Kohlmarkt to meet my aunt, with whom I was going to rendezvous in the Gersner restaurant on the Gärtnerstrasse up on the second floor. We wanted to eat a sandwich in order to forestall any malaise or even fainting episode during the proceedings. My aunt had already been to Gessner's. She had already classified my sartorial transformation as acceptable and uttered her famous, well, all right. Until this moment, I hadn't worn a suit for years. Yes, until then, I had always appeared in nothing but trousers and pullover. Even to the theater, if I went at all, I only went in trousers and pullover, mainly in gray wool trousers and a bright red coarse-knit sheep's wool pullover that a well-disposed American had given me right after the war. In this outfit, I remember, I had traveled to Venice several times and gone to the famous theater at La Fenice, once to a production of Monteverdi's Tancredi, directed by Vittorio Bui, and I had been with these trousers and pullover in Rome, in Palermo, in Taormina, and in Florence, and in almost all the other capitals of Europe, apart from the fact that I've almost, almost worn these articles of clothing at home. The shabbier the trousers and pullover, the more I loved them. For years, people only saw me in these trousers and this pullover. I've worn these pieces of clothing for more than a quarter of a century. Suddenly, on the Graben, as I said, and two hours before the awarding of the Gropart Surprise, I found these pieces of clothing, which had grown in these decades to be a second skin, to be unsuitable for an honor connected with the name Gropartzer, which would take place in the Academy.